We're back for Caravan of Garbage. We are working our way through three Christopher Nolan films. Have you left a like on this video yet? Well, I haven't personally. In my frame of mind, it's not out. It's not out yet. Oh, there's some kind of time dilation. Maybe going I'll on leave with you. a like in my dream. Oh my goodness! But if you are watching this, leave a like. I'll life. do it in real, real life. life so yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Uh, a lot of people call this movie Inception. Uh, they don't. They don't call it Inception. They call it Inception. Sure. Maybe they will after this. Maybe they. Call <laughs> Maybe we'll put the idea in their head <laughs> to call it Inception in their daily so, life. A lot of people call this movie Inception the best Christopher Nolan movie. Oh, it's one of my favorites, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you at with it? I like it. It's yeah. a good movie. <laughs> Do you really? I think. I think a lot of people are like. Oh my god, this movie's gonna blow your mind. Oh my god, this movie's so incredible. And I maybe I don't feel that way towards it, like that yeah. intensely towards it. But I'm like, this is a good, solid action movie with an interesting premise and it, and it gets everything right for the most part. And it just, once the heist gets going, which is quite early in the movie, it doesn't take its foot off the accelerator does it? Do you know Are what I mean? Are you okay? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Look, one of us has been incepted in our dreams to either say words funny or perceive words funny. <laughs> Who is it? We don't know. See, the thing about this movie, like, I guess if I had one complaint, is that there's a lot of like, Alan Page, don't even worry about it. This is what's going on. Alan Page, I know you don't understand this, but we actually have an explanation for oh that. Oh my God, look, <laughs> here's the thing, is that upon re-watching this movie, I went to Google Image Search and I typed in Inception poster exposition, expecting somebody had Photoshopped the, the Inception poster to say just exposition. Oh, right, Because yeah. there's so much exposition. Yeah. Hasn't happened yet. I'm, yeah. ast I'm astounded. There's even a moment like well into the movie where Leonardo DiCaprio is, is, is sniping people. Uh -huh. And he's like, don't worry, they're not uh, real parts of his consciousness. It's just uh, the manifestations. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, Leonardo DiCaprio, we're, we're well into this by now. You don't need to do any more explanations, all right? What's happened either you're completely on board with the concept and you understand it and you're okay with that, or you're totally lost and you're, yeah. just, you're just like, oh, it's a scene set in the snow. This is fun. This actually started as a horror movie in the early 2000s, though. Christopher Nolan pitched, but he hadn't quite put it together yet. It was like, this is too ambitious to pull off at this point in time. I'm going to sit on this for a, like a, nearly a decade mm. to get this thing going again. But it's I, my golden egg. I'm yeah, going to... Yeah, pretty much. But it, it, what's interesting about this movie also is he's assembled it like you would a film crew. You've got your director and your set designer. You've got the actor, Alan Page. All of these things <laughs> that you need to make a movie are within that heist scene. Oh, is scene. this movie a metaphor for filmmaking? It's a metaphor for filmmaking, Mason. Oh, my God. So what is the, uh, what's the dream machine case? Holy, Hollywood. The dream machine case is Hollywood. <laughs> And yes. you inject it directly into your veins. How's the machine no. work? Okay, it's the, magic, right? It's, I mean, it's, mag just a magic, it's, ma it's just a magic wishing yeah. box, and it's designed to extract people's uh, dreams and, and knowledge from their brains. But how how does it? How does that? They're not even wearing a thing on their temple, so you right? know it's that they're in each other. Their brains. <laughs> but then then Dom Dom's gonna go for, in for one more job, but he's got to put the magic in somebody's brain. But that's not what the magic wishing box is for. How's he gonna do it? <laughs> well, he's gonna work real hard. He does. And try his he, best. Does he does. By the way, yeah, you got to hand wave away some stuff in this because. Because, like you said, if you're not kind of on board for the logic of this universe, mm -hmm. just stop. Yeah, I know there's been kind of talk of it lately, like, wait a minute, maybe Inception isn't very good. It doesn't make much sense. I know Rick and Morty have talked about it as well. Oh, yeah. The Done a Dream Within Dream episode. This is going to be a lot like that, except, you know, it's going to make sense. Inception made sense. You don't have to try to impress me, Morty. But I think if you can get past that, which obviously most people can, this is a blast, man. I think it's it is, yeah. It's a great movie, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what I also like about this movie is so much of it is practical effects. People probably already know that, but what I've got here they is... They tilted that entire city. That's right. <laughs> they, put it on a, they put it on a jack. They didn't put it back either. They just left it. Oh my god. <laughs> just vague Europeans <laughs> sitting at cafes upside down. Hey! Okay, so this segment of the show is called Real Stuff. That was real. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, all right. You ready? Yeah. Uh, the debris in the streets of Paris when it blows up. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. The water rushing into Leonardo DiCaprio's dream near the start. Mm -hmm. Real water ru rushing in. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The spitting hallway, of course, that's probably the most famous one. Yeah. It's a hundred feet long. Joseph Gordon-Levitt did his own stunts. He's just tumbling around in that thing having a good time. A uh, big train was a real train, Ooh. but it was truck. They put train over truck. Oh, my God. That so is movie magic. Make truck train. <laughs> uh, Intriguing. <laughs> the walking up the wall bit. Yep. And when they're like, let's walk up this that wall. That really shonky green screen. Yeah, I remember that. You remember that, yeah. The walk is real, but yeah, the effects are. You understand. I understand. Yeah. I've seen I've seen the Ministry of Silly Walk sketch. <laughs> Monty Python. 
Uh, the tilting bar with Killian Murphy, where he's like, Killian Murphy, did you know this is a tilting bar? And he's like, oh my God, I thought oh. this was a regular bar. Oh my God, yep. <laughs> but they nail everything down. So yep. you see like the fish bowls don't tilt, just the water in them, same uh-huh. with the glasses. All the cast and crew are just like furiously gripping the set <laughs> as it's tilting <laughs> at 45 degrees. Christopher Nolan's like, today everyone's a grip. And all the crew are like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> ah! Well, they actually, they auditioned extras because not everybody could do it. So they I went bet. through a bunch of people like, nah, no balance, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> We need people with balance and poise. Uh, The Penrose Stairs. Oh, yes, the MC Escher style stairs. That's right. The Avalanche. They did real avalanches in the snow. And, of course, um, they used cherry pickers to block the sun in the sequence in the rain because they filmed in LA. And they're like, LA's too bright. There's too many stars shining in LA even during the (laughs) daytime. They had cherry pickers that they'd have to move during the day to keep it overcast. Intriguing. Which is pretty incredible. Uh, now, a big famous part of this movie, which, Go we, on. which we talked about last week when we wrapped up the prestige, mm-hmm. the score in particular. Bah, 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 bah. You know, you've, everyone knows it. <laughs> Within the context of this movie, I mean, they even have a, a story point for why it exists. It's a slowed down version of French song. French song. You know French <laughs> yes, song? Yes, I do, yes. Yeah, Edith Piaf. Did you know that Marianne Cotillard played Edith Piaf in a movie? She plucked all her eyebrows out for it. Is that a coincidence? Probably. Yeah, apparently it is i got a question for you, Mason. Yes. You're a man of fashion. Oh, yes. You're a man of the times. Oh. But you're also a man out of time in what? terms of fashion. What's going on? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> so, clothing. I know yes. you're a big fan. Where are you at with this movie? Because oh it was huge at the time. People were like, oh, my goodness, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, could you look any swankier? <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I'm, I'm, I'm like Even in, 10 years on? Yeah, it still, still holds up for the most part. Yeah, nice, some nice three-piece suits. Mm-hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio is wearing his nice sort of... French style work jacket for his yeah. casual scenes. Yep. Tom um, Hardy's calling people darling. He's looking ridiculous. <laughs> See, Tom Hardy's outfits in this are so sort of strangely out there that uh, they they don't really age. Yeah, if right. anything, they're more contemporary now. Oh my god! Wearing his camp collars <laughs> and his textured jackets. No, he's looking good. Everybody's looking good. That's good to hear. What yeah. about Michael Caine? He's got that Mandarin collar jacket, doesn't he? He's looking very intellectual. God, you're good. I, you just you just you just <laughs> ripping out names of things. I would never even know that. Uh-huh. You know what works for me in this movie? What's that? I mean, there is the desperation of the heist and you're stuck within a dream of the dream. If you die within a dream, you die in many dreams and then you get go down into dream hell. <laughs> what happens is uh, if you die in a dream normally, you wake up, except if you've been sedated, in which case if you die in a dream, you go down to limbo. And if you go down to limbo, there's a chance you'll go mad. I mean, it's not a very good chance because most of the people who go down to limbo <laughs> don't go mad. Yeah. Like, I mean, DiCaprio didn't go mad and Fisher didn't go mad and Saito didn't go mad. And Ariadne didn't go mad. That's right. It's only Mole that went mad. So, I mean, realistically, just take a holiday in, in limbo and then come back up and you'll Seems be fine. Seems fine. You're not wrong. But what worked for me, though, was the idea that Leonardo DiCaprio needs to get back to his kids. I think maybe it's because I've had kids since then. <laughs> but I, I feel like th- there's a level of comprehension in this movie that I Here have that go. you don't. Here we I'm go. Saying, Mason, as a father... No, but I know about all the suits and stuff. Come on. <laughs> That's true. We all have, we both have things going on, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. But also, DiCaprio apparently worked close with Christopher Nolan for months to work in the human element of this story. Because so much of this is mechanical. It's moving parts. You know, yeah, it's, right, it's uh-huh. stairs that go nowhere. And Nolan is a craftsman. He's a craftsman, say, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's definitely the way that you can look at his movies. But I think that human element totally works for me. You're familiar with the totem theory, aren't you? Oh, yes. What's going on there? I have some ideas and I have a question also, which maybe you can answer. Sure. Maybe it's been answered before. I don't know. I don't watch anything on YouTube. But here's the thing. <laughs> so in the world of Inception, uh, if, you're, if you're concerned that you might be trapped in someone else's dreams and they're trying to extract information from you, uh, you carry a totem. It's a right. small trinket yep. uh, that only you know the, the specifics of. Yes. Uh, and if you think maybe you're asleep... You grab a hold of that thing, and if it's if if it feels right, you're awake. If it doesn't feel right, something's wrong. Mm. Leonardo DiCaprio's totem, formerly belonging to his wife, is a little spinning top, and in a dream, for some reason, it spins forever. But if you're awake, physics takes effect, and it doesn't yes. spin forever. And at the end of the movie, he spins that totem, and then he sees his kids, and he just leaves the totem behind. Is it real? Is it a dream? I don't know. Michael Caine has been like, well, all the bits where I'm in the movie are real. That's what Christopher Nolan told me. Mm-hmm. And so that means that that was real at the end. Also, it wiggles a little bit, which makes me think that. <laughs> You're right. But the point, though, of that scene is yes. apparently, and I think this is what I took from it, it doesn't matter. Oh, of course not. Yeah. It's, that's the point. Yeah. Obviously, he's like, I don't care for totems. I only care for kissing my kids. Well, we live in a world in which nobody's ha- nobody's happy with a with a with yeah. an open end finale where you you just can't know so there's a there's a lot of reaching people like well actually his totem is his wedding ring and yes. when he is awake yeah 
he is wearing it. Yes. And when he's asleep, he's not wearing it. Or the opposite. Or the opposite. <laughs> I didn't go back and check. There simply wasn't time. Yes. But here's my question to you, James. Sure. When you put somebody under and they're asleep and mm-hmm. you're invading their dreams, they're just right there. Couldn't you just rifle through their pockets and find the one unusual yes. thing <laughs> in their pockets and then make a copy of that and put it in the dream? Because you'd be like, okay, I'm going to go through this guy's pockets. All right, keys, bus ticket, golden chess piece. <laughs> Maybe it's that. Maybe we should focus on that. So I think what the solution would be, it's kind of like a a war between like stealth technology and radar. Like both sides keep building up the technology. Sure, yeah. So what I think ultimately would happen is you would capture one of these extractors Mm. and you'd be like, I'm going to get stuff out of their mind through their dreams. And you'd go through their pockets and they'd have like 200 (laughs) knickknacks. And you'd be like, oh God, I don't know. Little thing of the Eiffel Tower. A Pez dispenser with Batman on it. I think I'd just use regular stuff. Like I'd have a lot of weird trinkets. Yeah, but yeah. then I'd have like this old bus ticket that was folded in half. Mm. And that's the thing. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. But they'd probably be ready for that somehow. You'd be ready for that. They'd have to be an additional guy on the team who's just obsessive compulsive collector of things. Yeah. And, the, and he would just catalog everything. A reverse Lucas Haas. I wanted to be <laughs> s- s- clear. In Dom's earlier team, yes. he's got he's got the actor Lucas Haas playing a character whose name I cannot recall. Yeah, but he's and he's it. just bad at it. He's so Wh- bad where at they, it. Did they get him on Fiverr or Cameo or something <laughs> like that? Like He doesn't know... He, he can't architect. He doesn't know how to build a, a, a room that the, the, the subject would believe in. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't know what a kick is. No. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's like, give him the kick. And he's like, what? What do you mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody mean, knows this. To be fair, mm-hmm. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was talking to us, the audience. <laughs> he was talking to the audience, that's true, yeah. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, Later, they, yeah. And nobody seems to care when they're dragging him away to shoot him either. <laughs> that's, he got what he deserved. Later in the movie, um, Leonardo DiCaprio is talking to Ariadne, but really he's talking to the people watching the trailer. Because he's like, look, that's great, all the cities you're turning upside down and all the, uh, all, the, all the mirrors you're building on the streets and all the bridges you're lifting up into the air. That's good for the trailer. But we're not going to use these in the actual movie. <laughs> we're going to put all these effect shots in the trailer yeah. and then they're going to bend This is a... super compelling imagery, don't get me wrong. So compelling, <laughs> but I mean, later, due to the rules of this world, you can't actually use any of them. You're only going to be able to design regular cities and regular cars <laughs> and, and regular warehouses, I guess. I don't know. I guess. Here's a question for you. I'm ready. Uh, This is the only question I have about this movie. Of the many questions you could have, uh, it relates to dying in a dream. If you die in a dream, you die in real life, apparently. Even though we've established, you probably will be fine. You'll just turn into an old man and someone will be like, hey, let's boot. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Yeah, yeah. My question is, if you wee in a dream, do you wee in real life? Oh, my God. Well, that's a good question because, if you Mm. recall, Yusuf the Chemist... Drinks too much on the plane. Drinks too much wee. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's first class. You get whatever you want. <laughs> he drinks too much on the plane, and then when they go into his dream, it's raining in the dream. Yes. Right? And that, that's, that is apparently a consequence of, of the drinking too much. So I guess if you if he weed in real life... Yeah. He was under for 10 ra- hours The rain well. would stop, I yeah. guess. But he was under for 10 hours or something like that, the yeah, duration yeah. of that flight. It's amazing that he didn't wee. That's what the tube's for. <laughs> the box just shoots out a ray or something. You don't need to actually be connected. The box collects all your wee. Oh, okay. That yeah. makes sense. That was the last unanswered question about the movie <laughs> Inception. So, Well, that makes sense to me. So if you've been watching this being like, who are these idiots and why are they talking about this movie they know nothing about? We solved your problem. And this is going to be a separate video with a, with a big circle and an arrow in it. That's right. <laughs> the title's going to be We in the Box? Is there We in this box? This is one of those things where like, it's an action movie that doesn't talk down to you, but it's not so complicated that you don't understand it, the way that it's crafted. Similarly to The Prestige, you can follow this if you're kind of, if, if you're vaguely paying attention, you know right. you kind of know what's going on. And I think, again, that's an absolute credit mm. to the crafting of this universe because it so easily would have made no sense. Oh, absolutely. Or just yeah. the audience is going, you've lost me, I don't know. Where are we? Are we in the snow? Are we in a van? Who's weeing and who isn't? Right. You know what I mean? It's uh, incredible. I agree, yeah. You but know, again, the, there is a lot of exposition. <laughs> that, that does help, doesn't it? God, there's a lot. Yeah. Here's something you might not know, though. I'm ready. There's actually going to be a video game Based in the world of Inception. Oh, I would have loved that. It was called Inception, but video games, everyone. Oh my goodness, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So during a, uh, a Rome press conference, Christopher Nolan expressed the idea of creating a video game spin-off. One thing we are looking at doing is developing a video game based on the world of the film, which is all kinds of ideas that you can't fit into a feature film. That's something we've been talking about and are looking at doing long-term in a couple of years. Uh, since that statement in 2010, there has been no 
I love a video game. But I would, oh my God, I'd love to see an Inception video game. Mm. Remember how they did Matrix Path of Neo and it was yeah. the Matrix but more? So you're saying you're Leonardo DiCaprio, you're fighting giant ants. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Why not? It's a dream. Put it, put it there in limbo. Also, Leonardo DiCaprio, stop dreaming. You're ruining everyone's dreams God. with your bad dreams. You know what I enjoyed? Look, here's some, here's some miscellaneous notes that I have for this movie. Uh, speaking of that, you know, it's it's important to build kind of tension in these movies, you know. Disagree. Uh, all right, fine. <laughs> well, I think it's important to build tension in these movies, but there's a point in which uh, Moll is about to kill Ariadne in, in the dream, sort of the test dream where Ariadne is testing out the rules and she goes too far. And then, of course, uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's subconscious goes to kill her. There's a moment in that where Dom is like, no, ah, no, don't do it, Moll, ah. But, I mean, he knows everyone's going to be fine. So, like, he, if anything, he'd just be annoyed. I think You'd be like, oh, God, this again? <laughs> Ser- seriously, seriously. <laughs> seriously, Mal, stop this, seriously. Oh, God. I think he's doing it for Alan Page. Like, yeah. well, if I want to offer this job, I can't be like, oh, no, hey, yeah, you're going to get stabbed. <laughs> I'd be like, don't worry about it. I'd be like, don't worry about <laughs> But just- it still hurts, though. I guess. Yeah. I'd be like, lean into it. <laughs> <laughs> if she goes to stab you, put your head into it. <laughs> It'll be over quicker. That's kind of his Star Trek II Wrath of Khan moment. If you remember in Star Trek II Wrath of Khan, he wasn't in that movie. What are you talking about? No, but about, in that Mason? movie. But Captain Kirk is in that movie, and then and then Khan leaves on the spaceship, and yeah. and, and Captain Kirk's like Khan, Khan, no, and then Spock. he's like, "You're thinking of the movie Star Trek Into Darkness." I am thinking. Of that. <laughs> and then, then he's like, oh, "Actually, we can just escape this yeah, way. We figured it out. We've, it's fine." So. Yeah, that was for nobody. It was yeah. for nobody. <laughs> it was for the audience. <laughs> uh, let's see. What what else do I have here? Uh, a special shout out to uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's expression when he explains to Fisher what subconscious security is. Oh, burst the, so many memes. The squint that launched a million <laughs> memes. That squint, very good. Uh, and also, I, I liked a moment where there's a moment where Cobb is being chased uh, through Mombasa. And one of the Cobalt Engineering security guys says, you're not dreaming now, are you? Which I like to think that there's now a rivalry between regular security and subconscious extraction security. <laughs> yeah. And I like to think that, you know, obviously, because one is kind of cooler and more interesting sure. and, and more sophisticated. Clothing, and et cetera. Exactly. But I like to think it's because after the, the debut of subconscious security, regular security was renamed dumb, boring, normal security. <laughs> So now when that guy like meets a woman yeah. in a bar, she's like, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm dumb, normal, boring security. She's like, ugh. Gross. Well, I'll Gross. see you in my dreams, not. <laughs> I love that. Just a pack of like dumb bullies chasing DiCaprio. Bad timing, DiCaprio. <laughs> well, well, well. Wish, you, wish you could wake up from this, huh? <laughs> and they wedge him. They dunk his head in the toilet. Uh, all in all, Inception. It's a good movie, I think. I think so. If you've some, if you haven't watched Inception, <laughs> but you've somehow suffered through this movie, go back and watch it. Give it a bloody go, mate. Yeah. Give it a red hot go. Mm-hmm. If you got some theories about it's Inception, what are your theories about Inception? Yeah, they can be we related, but we've covered that. You might have something to build on. It could be on we, yeah. Next week we're coming back to wrap up our Christopher Nolan trilogy. People are like, which direction are you going to go? Memento, Insomnia. Following Batman movies. Another time for the Batman movies. Can you not? God, just leave it just for a leave second. It. Can we not talk about Batman for five minutes? But here it comes, Mason. I can't, just to be clear. I'm going to talk about <laughs> Batman after this video ends. That's right. Uh, Interstellar. I know. Well, I don't like Interstellar. I don't, don't like the movie Interstellar. The game away, Mason. Maybe I'll, but the, you know what? I, I was not super fond of The Prestige first time I watched that. So maybe in a rewatch, That's right. I'll find some hidden depths to this movie in that weird trans-dimensional bookshelf or whatever happens in it. Exactly, or whatever happens in it. Also, subscribe if you want, because there's videos here all the goddamn time. But if you want early videos, Mm -hmm, you go to mm -hmm, bigsandwich.co, you sign up. Early Caravan of Garbage videos. Bonus podcast episodes. Movie commentaries. Movie commentaries. So that's all very exciting stuff, isn't it? That's right. You can come back and see Interstellar early. That's right. Uh, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Suggest a thing. We might look at it at some point. But uh, look, look, we'll see. We'll see Who's we... the reverse Christopher Nolan? Maybe we should watch him later. The reverse Christopher... Jonathan Nolan. He's oh, yeah. not the reverse. So what's the reverse of a Christopher Nolan? I guess Nolan? it's Michael Bay. We covered those already. Go back and watch the Transformers <laughs> movies. <laughs> all right, guys. Catch you next time. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.